Welcome to Martini Time. Here it is in beautiful Blackstone, the center of the world, but then you too are at the center of the world. And so we wait. It's calm outside now. Uh, uh, it's kind of like the quiet before the storm. Uh, we expect to get some rain, maybe some breeze, don't know. But uh, the, the title of this talk is uh, Death is the Eye of Culture. Death is the Eye of Culture. And uh, I, I, I'm using this topic, I'm meditating on this, I'm sharing this with you because, uh, first of all, culture is everything. Uh, you could say uh, American culture, uh, it's like Russian nesting dolls. Uh, you have your family culture, uh, your local culture, like Blackstone is my local culture here, and then you have uh, your state culture, your region, southern culture. And then you have your national culture, American culture. Then you have Western culture, uh, Western civilization culture, and then human culture. Or, and so in culture, that includes government, religion, uh, the whole catastrophe. <laughs> it's like a fishbowl in which we're swimming. And each of us is culture with fins. Uh, each of us is our culture with fins in a fishbowl of culture. And, um, you know, so the more you travel, the more uh, you are influenced by other cultures. If you don't travel and you just live in one culture, uh, you don't really see out of that culture. But anyway, so that's the idea of culture. So the next thing is death is the eye of culture. So right now, let me take a drink here. We're all focused on the hurricane. And you know, the media is the roof brain chatter of culture. You know what your own, our own minds have, it's called roof brain chatter. It's talky talk, yada, 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 internal monologue going. And the more stress we get, the more it goes. The more roof brain chatter. You can tell if you're stressed or not because of the amount of roof brain chatter. It's almost like the chatter comes up in order to, to insulate us from the threat of some stress, which is either past or future. So hurricanes are future threat. So it creates a lot of media roof brain chatter. It doesn't do anything to stop the hurricane. It gives the illusion of doing something about this unknown threat by measuring it. So it's like obsessive with measurement. Oh, it moved two inches. So we'll talk about that for an hour. <laughs> Doesn't do anything, you see. That's why it focuses. And, and future threat is death. So death is the eye of culture, of the media. And that's very obvious. But then media is also the verbalization of our culture an electronic culture, in the same way that the internet is an electronic culture, you see. So anyway, death is the eye of the culture. And if you notice that media stops when there is the eye, when, when the death eye is there. Uh, it also stops if there's a mass shooting, or a terrorist act, or a funeral. You see, so death stops and refocuses the eye of media. The roof brain chatter creates the roof brain chatter of media around it, orbiting around it, you see. And the greater the threat, the faster the roof brain chatter. So uh, a shooting of uh, five people uh, maybe in a supermarket now is uh, category one. <laughs> But if 20 people are shot, it's a Category 5 hurricane. Whoa, 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 you see. So, isn't that an interesting comparison? Uh, the closer the death threat, the more category, the stronger the category of roof brain chatter. So if you have mass shooting, it's like a hurricane. Nobody can stop it. You can't go back and undo it, but you can analyze it to death. <laughs> 
as if the roof brain chatter is removing the threat, you see. So we're fascinated with it, and we watch it. But right now, I mean, I know I've got the TV, the news on, you know, so it's it's background chatter for me. And I just like one ear keeps it open in case something new happens. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm writing or something, you see. But but it's an interesting uh, thing, you know. So when there's no death, roof brain chatter is kind of. No, oh, not even a, it's not even a tropical storm. So I mean, it'll invent, look around for something, anything to talk about, anything to chatter about, uh, as if it were a spider looking for a fly. And then the uh, when something happens, oh, oh, everything focuses on it. You see, and uh, when there is no big threat or death eye, you see, the little ones are created, and that'll focus things for a while. You know, so you chew on that for a while, then another one comes along, and the other one disappears. Where did it go? <laughs> you see? So, so the bigger the death threat, the bigger the eye, the bigger the category of roof brain chatter, and that's the same way with our mind. When there is a uh, some event that you didn't resolve to satisfaction and you had leftover stress, that creates roof brain chatter. Oh, I should have done it this way. Why didn't I say that? And then I imagine different ways I could have done the event. If I had said this and I imagine myself beating up that person or all kinds of strategies and it just goes on and on and on and on and on, you see. <laughs> and uh, so this culture uh, is a verbal semantic thing. Culture is a semantic reality in which language, thinking, thought, you see, uh, creates it. And then we are conditioned or brainwashed to believe the semantic reality or language of culture is the real thing. So that we, it's like going to a, a restaurant and looking at the menu and oh, the pictures are so great. And you say, well, the hell with the food, I'm just going to eat the menu. So that's the symbolic abstract, the menu is the symbolic abstraction of the real food. So culture is like a mediator between us and direct experience of reality. So you have this culture, in India it's called Maya, illusion, deception, and now we're always fighting and believing in and pointing out the delusion, the illusion, the false news. <laughs> Trump is a culture within culture pointing to the other culture and saying it's false. You see, so Trump is like a, a little hurricane inside of a bigger hurricane of culture. <laughs> and he only, in Trump's little hurricane, only gathers strength when he's got the eye of an enemy, you see. Whenever there's the eye of an enemy, he's doing it, he's the blame, they did it, you see. That eye of the enemy, his death threat, keeps his category going. But anyway, I digress. So, so we're looking at death, the eye is the eye of culture. Because death is unknown. If something is known and all figured out, it's not news. You see, it's only when there's an unknown element to it, which is a threat, because, you, because the threat means that you can't incorporate it into culture uh, like, a, like a fly is wound up by the spider, by the web, unless, it's, unless it can't be enculturated into the web, you see, so that it is a non-threat because you know everything about it and you've removed it, you see, as long as there is an unknown quality to it, it becomes a death threat because death is the unknown. That's it. I'm not just talking about, boom, physical death. I'm talking about the idea of death, the concept of death, you see, not physical death. Physical death is not unknown because when you die, it's, you don't know it. <laughs> 
You're not there to watch it. You see, so death isn't an experience. Death isn't an experience. There's nobody there to experience death. You ever thought of that? You know. So the only thing we fear is the concept of death. You can't fear death because death doesn't exist, except in our mind. So there's a concept of death, and concept of death is created by culture. Concept of death is created by culture. And then it's used by culture to keep us bound into culture. So we don't get out of culture because of the death concept. It's death out there. It's, culture says it's death outside of culture. Don't go there. See, so <laughs> death is used by culture to keep you inside culture, afraid of death. But death is life. You can't separate them. They're not two. You can't choose. I mean, of course, you choose not to run out in front of a car. I'm not talking about that. You see. So death and life are one because without the other, it doesn't exist. Death doesn't exist without life. Life doesn't exist without death. They're one, but seen from two different things. Perspectives. Anyway. I digress again. So I'll let that go. I just used the, uh, I found it interesting how uh, we can plan now for the next week to have uh, the media focused on uh, the eye of Florence, first as a impending death or doom or unknown, uncontrollable, and then the cleanup, and then the stories. And then the stuff, the, oh, my house was blown. And oh, somebody, you know, and all the stories, you know. And so this will be roof brain chatter for a week now. And then it will be gone. And there will be another uh, death threat, another uh, death concept. And the media will be focused on that. And we'll say, Florence? What was Florence? <laughs> Thanks for dropping in.